Hey, what's going on today, Adams Beer Adventures fans? Welcome back. Um, I think I'm up to episode 7. I think this is episode 7 of Talking Beer. Um, it's a beautiful day here, southern Maine. It's about 70 out, sitting back, um, enjoying some sunlight. And I got six beers to talk about today, all from the same brewery. And uh, we're going to talk today about Great Lakes Brewing. Uh, they're over in Cleveland, Ohio. I was able to get their stuff um, shipped to me through, a, uh, uh, through an online vendor. So I'm really looking forward because I've never been there. I've, uh, I've been out to Cleveland, Ohio. I'm disappointed that I didn't make it over to this brewery when I was there. But hey, uh, it is what it is. So... Today, we're going to make up for some of that by trying out some of this stuff today. So, uh, because I've never been there, I don't have a glass from them. I figured I'd change things up. I've been using all the taster glasses and everything. Instead, I did find a, a glass from Cleveland. Um, this is the, of course, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's the, uh, there in Cleveland as well, and I've been there. That's a pretty fun place to go if you get a chance. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into this because I get six beers today to go through. So, since it is a little warm out, I'll start with the darker stuff, work my way up to the, uh, the lighter stuff, because I'm not going to enjoy the darker stuff as much today. So, we're going to start off today with the Edmund Fitzgerald Porter that they have. All right, let's get a little pour going here. And just a few ounces. All right. Let's take a look at that. You probably the sun probably makes it really easy to see. That's got a very nice red uh, ale look to it. Malty, caramel uh, notes maybe. Toasty, um, definitely bread notes and uh, on the toasty side. So you definitely get that, uh, the roasted malt flavor coming through. Not terribly sweet. It's actually fairly light considering um, that it should be a darker beer. And this one comes in at, uh, it actually doesn't say what the alcohol by volume is for this one. Oh, nope, there it is, 6%. So 6% uh, ABV and 37 IBU. Um, it's actually not a bad porter. It's pretty decent. It's actually lighter than I anticipated. So, uh, I'll probably finish that one off later for sure. So, hmm, that is good. That's really good. And you can see that it had a nice, um, nice head on it there. That off, off white tan head to it. Good porter. Actually, that surprised me. Get some water in there, rinse that out. So next one we're going to move on to. We got um, some ales here and lager styles, both styles that we're going to get into. And the next one I have up is the. Oh man, I don't know if I can pronounce this. Dortmunder Gold. I probably pronounced that wrong. If I did, correct me. Um, I'd love to be able to pronounce it correctly, but this is a lager style. All right, let's give that a try here. Get that glass cleaned out a little bit from that porter. Well, that's got a nice pour to it. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a nice golden lager, as the name implies. Look at that, just the right amount of carbonation. That little bit of head there, nice and white. Very mild on the scent, uh, on the smell. It's a little bit of a drier style lager than what I'm used to, but it's good. I'm definitely getting the malt on the back end with the bitterness up front. Definitely some. Um, some caramel notes on the end there with that sweetness. It's good though. I like that. It's pretty light considering. Um, this one comes in at 5.8% ABV and 30 IBU, which makes sense because it's really not that bitter. 
it's actually a pretty decent uh, logger. You could sit and, and enjoy that for the, you know, during weather like this out in the yard and everything and doing that kind of stuff. So it's pretty good. I like that. So that's that's really good logger. Now one of the things, you know, loggers tend to be something that are harder to brew. And excuse me while I take care of that. The loggers tend to be longer to brew. So many places don't do it, although I am seeing now that a lot more uh, places are doing the loggers, which is great because I do like the logger style beers. So that's a good one. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll just stick with the uh, with the loggers because there's no there's no other porters, there's no stouts in this group. Uh, but I do have another logger here. This is the Elliot Ness Amber Logger. All right, this one comes in at 6.1 ABV with a 27 IBU. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I hope everyone's doing well. And again, thank you to all my fans for, for keeping with me and keeping me going with all this stuff. Because this is the closest I get to any of the beer ventures right now is uh, sitting here doing the videos with you guys. So cheers. I hope you're drinking along with me while you're watching this. So here we go. Another nice golden pour here. The head on this one is a little more off-white than the other. Um, it could just be from the light that I'm getting from the sun. I might not be able to see it 100%, but... This looks good. Nice carbonation to it. Hmm. Definitely smells more of a lager style than the last one. And that drinks more like a lager. That's pretty good. Definitely starting to feel uh, some of that from the uh, from the alcohol content being on the higher side. But not bad, but I can taste hints of it. You get a sweetness with this, uh, unlike the other lager that we just tried, the gold one. This one's a lot sweeter, not as much bitterness, but the bitterness, it, when it's there, it's consistent throughout. You you feel the, the sweetness of the malt first, followed by just that nice, easy, bitter, and then a little bit of the sweetness to bring it over the top. That's That's good. That's a good lager, too. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. I like it. So make sure... Sorry, I'm just dumping the stuff all over the side of my deck. Like I said, this stuff is not scripted at all. All of it's just kind of going with the flow while I'm sitting here enjoying my backyard. Um, I guess I don't... I can't get out and do the brewery stuff anymore right now because of everything going on. So this is the next best thing. The good news is is that things are starting to open up so hopefully soon I'll be able to get in and actually do the brewery stuff again in the next few weeks it looks like we're heading that way between Maine and New Hampshire at least I don't know about Massachusetts or any of the other states for that matter um, but at least there's there's light at the end of the tunnel with this so hopefully we can enjoy our summers and do more beer ventures and everything in person um, but in the meantime I'm gonna keep doing these talking beer episodes Hopefully, again, I, I appreciate the support that everyone's been giving me, so we'll keep going. So the next one I have from Great Lakes is a Burning River Pale Ale. All right. Now, we're back into the pails here. This one comes in at 6% with 45 IBU. There seems to be a consistency. They tend to be around 6% for ABV with these guys, um, and the IBUs are pretty... Um, are, are pretty... Uh, lower high according to the beer style so that's that's a good sign give that a nice pour that looks good that's a nice yellow almost amber color to it carbonations looking good and a nice um, I think I just had a hornet on me <laughs> I just felt it Yep, pretty sure it was a hornet. Great. Anyway, let's get back to the beer. <laughs> so here we are. Very thin head on that. Excellent floral and citrus notes on that. Subtle, but not in your face. But you, you definitely can detect it. Mm. 
that's a pretty light bodied IPA. I'm a little surprised at that, to be honest with you. I figured coming in at 6% it'd be a little on the heavier side, but that's good. That actually is, is something I, I'll probably enjoy on a day like today where it's warm out. That's a drinkable beer. Of course, at 6%, it's going to hit you quick, and it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be hard to get up after you've been sitting down poolside or beachside for a little while. So cheers to that. Mm, that's good. All right. So we're going to move on to the next IPA. All right. This one is the Commodore Perry India Pale Ale. And this one comes in at 7.7% .7 with a 70 IBU. So this is definitely on the other side. So um, I really enjoy these doubles and imperials. They're they're always pretty good, and the IBU levels are significantly higher. And if you've been following along with me on these videos, you'll notice that I really haven't talked much about the IBUs or the ABV. And honestly, that's not because I didn't know anything about it, or need to, um, or felt that I need to do anything with it. I honestly, I just usually don't pay too much attention to it. Um, maybe the ABV just because you know anticipating you know if I'm out by myself for lunch or something I want to pay attention to the ABV so I don't overdo it because you know obviously I don't want to drink and drive um, but people have asked me they're like hey how come you're not saying you know what the ABV and what the IBU is because a lot of people want to know that information so that's why I'm including it in the um, in the videos now so thank you for the feedback. I do appreciate that because the more I get from you guys and the more feedback I get and the, the more you guys like this stuff, the better off it is um, for you because I offer the content. So whoop, here comes that hornet again. Jeez, must be a nest nearby I gotta take care of after we're done with this. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into this Commodore Perry IPA and see where we're at. Oh, that's got a nice pour to it. Now look at that, it's got a, it just a thick enough head, it's starting to fade out right now with enough consistent carbonation there, nice yellow um, appearance there, not, it's uh, not hazy at all, so it's not a New England style, but it's definitely, yep, I can smell it, it's definitely on the Imperial double side of the IPA spectrum. Wow. That's actually incredible. That's a really, really awesome beer. Nice, smooth bitterness for being at 40. That's actually really good. Nice, consistent bitterness throughout, but it's got a very sweet citrusy taste to it and very subtle citrus smell to it. The sweetness lasts pretty consistently throughout too, which is impressive. But for a double or not, um, excuse me, an Imperial, that has a lot of uh, flavor to it and well-balanced too. That, that's an excellent IPA. Mm. That's really good. That's really good. Actually, that's probably my favorite out of everything we've tasted so far today. All right, so moving on the next one, I'm just going to talk about it real quick while we uh, while I finish off this other one. This is also, again, from Great Lakes. This is the last one we're gonna do today. And this is Holy Moses White Ale. So white ales usually come out around the spring. And white ales are um, brewed typically with, uh, with spices and stuff like that. This one happens to be um, spices and chamomile. Okay, usually I see a lot of the white ales are brewed with um, with orange zest and things like that, lemon zest. So they tend to be more along those lines, which is fine. That's great. I like those too. And I'm curious though with the chamomile how this is going to taste. So let's go ahead and rinse this glass out. My neighbors are looking at me funny because I'm talking into my uh, my computer here drinking beer, so they all think I'm crazy. <laughs> it's fun though. This is a lot of fun. I like doing this stuff. All right, so let's take into this last one here, shall we? All right, so this is the Holy Moses White Ale. Let's see how this looks. Clear. 
nice thin white head on it. Lots of carbonation that you can see there. Now you can smell that chamomile. You can smell those spices in there. Clove. Some of those floral earthy notes to it. That's That's good. That is really good. That's a really good interpretation of a Belgian white. Comparable to uh, Belgian white such as Allagash from here in Portland. Uh, so, cheers. That The last two that I did, I'm glad I saved those for last because those two were amazing. The Holy Moses White Ale and the uh, Commodore Perry India Pale Ale. Those were both excellent beers. The rest of them were really good too, but those two were definitely my, the last two were definitely my favorite. So, awesome. Uh, really glad I got to try these. I will have to make it out to Great Lakes Brewing Company the next chance I, I, I can when I can get out to Cleveland. Not that there's a lot to do in Cleveland, but there are some other uh, cool places out there like the little Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to go visit and things like that. So uh, if you get a chance, go do those things. Uh, of course, go go have an adventure, try new things. That's what this is all about. And thank you again, everybody can't say it enough my fans are the reason i do all this i hope you guys enjoy it i hope i'm not boring you it seems that it's pretty well received so we got more stuff coming the talking beer is this whole virus thing um starts getting uh, situation starts getting better uh i'll be doing less and less of the talking beer stuff and we'll start focusing on what the original plans were so keep an eye out for that stuff um again if you like this video please click like subscribe to the channel if you would like and uh, you can follow me on all the other forms of social media so facebook instagram uh twitter and untapped I, again i if you've been following me you don't i don't post hardly anything on twitter and so you're probably not going to see much there but i do have the account and it's all under adam's beer ventures and that's how you'll be able to find me and of course you can visit the website at www.adamsbeerventures.com and all the content that um, is on all the social media ends up there so be sure to check that stuff out too thanks guys and gals i hope everyone's doing well i hope everyone's feeling good and stay safe out there and i will see you soon with another episode of talking beer Cheers.